the Flash Bayonite AR-500 armor is here, guys. So let us saw into this thing here. Whatever. Get it open. Drag it out. Let's see what it's all about. Let's see what, let's see what we get. Okay, so we've got... Ow. Things are ridiculously heavy. So you can see why I thought it'd be nice to prep these and paint them. You know what I mean? Oh! Yeah. Let's see. This is the test panel. Okay. And this is not flashed. This part right here, you can see the color difference. Okay. It's not for sale. This is a test panel. Now this is this is what he was talking about for a uh, mitigation, a splatter mitigation shield. See, this is thin enough gauge steel that a round would punch right through it, but then it would vaporize once it was on the inside of the uh, the shield. Oh man, this guy is so smart. This is a brilliant, brilliant way to do this. This needs to be tested though. So what I need to do is get this set up and shoot it and see if it traps the splatter and if it mitigates it. This one is going to be going in my chest wig. Oh, that is freaking heavy. Oh, Lord, do I really want to be walking around with it. Oh. But what I do want to do is I'm going to uh, put this in my blast cabinet. I'm going to hit it with the 50 micron. Uh, silicon carbide or whatever the heck it is I got in there I can forget and get a nice finish on it and then paint it you know because it is steel and you don't want it to rust I think he did a wonderful uh, curve on that it's just right okay, see that nice curve it's a single uh, radius die with a 450 ton press Makes sense. so that's that's the flash AR armor okay guys I got my ears on. I got the plate set up there on that hay bale. There's the 308 round. There's the handy rifle. Now, let's see what happens. Are you ready for it? Okay, I must have hit the plate because it's not there anymore. <laughs> okay, guys. Nice. So, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Okay. That's one of the most largest, most powerful rounds that you're probably going to come up against. Short of maybe a Barrett 50 cal, right? <laughs> and look how little it deformed it. Just the slightest. I'm going to get it up in the sun so you can see that slight bulge. Here, let me get it on macro. So, I think that's an awesome test right there. Now, you can see what I'm talking about with splatter. That round just like vaporizes, and then you can see it goes off in every direction. So what would have that have done if there was something around it, okay? Okay, guys, I think I found a good box for this, because I can completely close up the plate inside this box, and we'll be able to see all the different directions that the splatter might be going. Away we go. Yeah, I must have hit something. I hope. Okay, now we're looking for splatter. Okay? Okay, guys. Do you see what I'm talking about with splatter now? Do you see how deadly that could be? How devastating that could be? Look at the splatter. Imagine that coming up and hitting you underneath your chin or in your neck. Okay? See this? See that? Imagine that. Imagine that hitting you in the arms. Look at that. It basically cut the whole box in half. That's what splatter does, guys. Or imagine you're in a team, and you get hit, and then the splatter takes out the guys next to you. Okay? There's no backsplash. You don't see a thing coming out the front of this at all. Okay? Here, look. That's, that would have gotten your thighs, or, if or your belly, or your crotch. Okay? 
And it's not about the plate surviving, because I'm pretty sure the plate is fine. Okay? Here's my second shot. Okay? No problem with the plate surviving. The plate will survive multiple hits. Very slight deformation. Uh, and you can see the mark. Look at the mark the plate made on the box. Now that's the mark it's going to make against your skin. And you're going to want splatter mitigation. Look at the leading on the inside of the box, guys. Okay, I think that's a really clear example of how dangerous splatter is going to be if you were to wear this plate by itself. Look at the leading. Look at the leading, guys. Look at the little tiny pieces of shrapnel. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what that would have done to you? It would have cut you open like a ripsaw. So that's the, that's the unmitigated splatter test. All right. So we've demonstrated. I've demonstrated with the 308 round just how good this metal is. But we need one more thing, don't we? We need splatter mitigation. Let me give you an overview of the splatter mitigation shield and the mounting. Okay. Here's the flash bayonite plate. So let me get on to the clamping. I'll show you guys the whole process so you understand what I'm doing. And crank down to the best of my ability. Alright, that's that's that. Let me grab a big hammer. that's pretty well installed. It's pretty well tight to it. And uh, Gary, I hope I, I hope I did you proud on your prototype here. Uh, it's an awesome idea. I think it's a great idea. And I'm going to go test it right now. Okay, we've got the 308. Which, as you can see, is a substantially large rifle caliber cartridge. We've got the Splatter mitigation shield, the prototype installed for rifle performance. Okay, according to what Gary told me, did the best I could. And we've got this box, which I think works pretty good to contain this. Okay, because it's approximately the same size. Slide that puppy in there. Right. Close it up. That way we'll really see. We're trying to go for as much of a zero oblique as possible, guys, so we can get a good pattern off of it. And uh, I'm really, uh, really curious to see how this works. So without further ado, let me chamber this whopping huge cartridge here to my beautiful new rifle. Draw back the hammer. And away we go. Dead center. Okay. Now, let me zoom back out. All right. Keep my ears off so I'm not yelling. Boy, he wasn't kidding when he said that rifle shoots nice. Man, I mean, I almost feel like getting out a tape measure to see whether or not that's perfectly centered. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Okay. Do you see any splatter, guys? You remember the other test I did in the box? Remember the other test I did in the box with the splatter? Isn't that a beautiful thing? Isn't that a beautiful thing? Gary! Gary, you're a genius man! A cost-effective splatter mitigation shield that doesn't involve expensive aramid fibers. Yes, man! Wow. When I did that, a little puff of smoke comes out. See the smoke coming out? Look at that. Holy crap. What's burning inside here? I gotta know. Here, let me peel this thing. Let's 
got a peeler thing on this one. Slide that puppy out and see. Wow. Wow. Wow, look at that. It didn't even go through the cardboard. It did make a whole bunch of lead. Look at the smoke coming out of there. Now, let me extract it this way. Look at the little the little lead bits that fell down. That is fascinating to me. Wow. Check it out, guys. So you can see I wasn't anywhere near zero oblique either. I came in at an angle. You can see the angle. Sorry, I still don't know where this camera lens is. I look at the button that I push, and I assume that's where the lens is, right? But it isn't. So, look, just a little bit of splatter came out the side. Just a little bit. And probably also because this thing was a little deformed, and there are shots there. I was really aiming for this part here, and I just got lucky and hit it dead center, right? <laughs> it's not what I wanted, because there's the other shot, and there's the other shot. So there was already a cavity behind this, and it still worked. I think if this is an undamaged plate with a perfectly applied splatter shield, that, that you wouldn't have even had those tiny little tear out. Hey guys, just to wrap up, uh, as you can see, the splatter mitigation shield that Gary Cola over at BanitSteel.com came up with. Works great. Four rifle rounds when installed as directed. He also has a way of installing this to mitigate pistol round splatter, but they're not the same. I imagine you could put two shields over it, but then you're talking about probably a 10-pound chunk of steel hanging off your chest, if not more. Gary's working on something right now. He says he doesn't want to talk about it till he gets it patented. That would be lighter and should work for rifle and pistol round splatter mitigation, but it's not out there yet. Soon. Talk to Gary. BayoniteSteel.com if you're interested in AR-500 armor. And uh, I hope that this was edifying to you guys that are considering putting steel between you and an enemy rifle round. Thanks for watching.